Okay, so the plan today is basically take Perrache from the all the way around there, da, 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 da. along that wall there's a drying pad um, and I haven't got that long until it dries out so plan is move it over there, fit the boat legs, dry it out, come back later and scrub it down, do the stone plant. Yeah. Time for the crusty old boat legs to come out of retirement, I've just gone up to my storage unit um, where all my stuff after the barn came down is stored, yeah they're looking fairly minging and haggard but they'll do the job. And naturally I'm running really late. So I have to hope there's enough depth over the pad for me to get over. I've got my sounder turned on, but I'm always a bit wary of how accurate that is. I've never calibrated it. I assume the people that owned the boat before me did, but... Uh, I think it tends to read on the pessimistic side, which is good. There is a depth, um, a depth line over there, so we'll take a look when we get over there. So I've got my legs, obviously ready, well, sort of ready to go, I need to extend them. What I'll do is I'll get over there first and just check we've got enough, enough time to actually get on with it. Yeah, I'm not sure, it's gonna be interesting. Don't really fancy having to reverse back out either, so I should probably have checked this. Okay, so it says we're at three and a half meters. And that's right next to the ladder, so that's got to be depth to the pad. Which is good. Okay, what I'm going to try and do is pick up a boy on my stern first. And steer the front onto the other boy. Which is not normally how I do it. Normally pick up boy at the front first. I've lost my gaff. Ah. No, I haven't. That's handy. No, I forgot the bow. First, I think. Uh, this is my reason for wanting to pick the bow up first because I was concerned if I picked the stern up first, then tried to manoeuvre, um, move the bow onto the other boys, I might wrap the prop.
hopefully I can prop walk it over to the other side. stern line first I think. So prop walk. When you don't want it to happen it'll happen. When you need it to happen it's not interested in happening. So yeah trying to go backwards without any flow over the rudder just wasn't interested in rotating. of a moment of madness. Now I've got the stern tied up, I think to myself, well I don't want to motor, I don't want to wrap the prop, so instead I'll row out to the other boy and uh, I'll pull the boat across to it. Um, I'll take a line to it. What a stupid idea. Anyway, I quickly abandoned that idea. So yeah, I'm trying to do two things. Um, I'm trying to motor forward and carefully adjust the stern line so I don't um, let it sink below my prop. Um, and I'm trying to let a bit of line out so I can reach the boy in front of me as well. Now you can see I've cocked it up, so I'm having to go backwards again. Happy days. Okay, so after picking up from the bow line um, and tightening the stern line back up, I decided to split the stern line onto both sides of the boat. Um, this is because at the time I thought my drying legs um, had lines that ran to these rear cleats. Crikey, right. That was a bit of a mess, but we're there. So, tied up, swinging around in the wind a bit, but not too badly. 
Yeah, time to get these legs on. Okay, so they're marked port and starboard, but I think that's only to do with the line lengths that are attached to them. sail out of the way, make moving around a bit easier. Right, here's where it's all fun and games. I think the foot might be rotated because it's got a really long line going to the bow and a really short line going to the stern, which doesn't seem right to me. So I'm gonna swing that around. Yeah, you have to set the length of these, which is a couple of inches shorter than the keel. It should be a mark. Yeah, there is a mark. I don't remember what it means. Uh, possibly another bit in so Oh, wow, well, well. Okay, that goes like that. Should be able to see the green. Oh, why didn't I set these up beforehand? Story of anything I do with boats, really. Good job. I went too tight on time here. You can see the bottom. Mildly terrifying. Uh, right, okay. And then this one. This pin is used for the next extension. Sorry, I don't even know how this is going to come out on camera. Probably badly. But hey, surely you're used to that by now. Right. Please don't roll off the side. I'm going to spin the foot round. a line. The line's got to be at the bottom of it. Yeah, green spot on the top. Now I always feel these feet look slightly short when they're set up on the boat. However, the boat just sits nose down in the water, which is mildly terrifying. Uh, however, I did send some pictures to the manufacturer and he said no, it all looked good. So, who am I to argue? So that should probably be tight. All right, lift them over. Hope you don't lose your lines. If it was right the first time around.
Okay, so it's very important that you get the angle of the legs right. And I might have to come forward a touch. Otherwise, it always looks like it's just going to topple forward. Let's have a look. Yeah, I'd say it's vertical, slightly forward. Alright, let's get the other one on before we bottom out. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. There's a mark, there's a line. Don't push the pin out. Be bad. <laughs> Good old mild steel clip there. Yeah. Which is another story of things to do on my boat. Find all of the mild steel and change it for stainless. Ah, uh, we've lost a cleat for this. This is going to be interesting. I uh, know it should go back to here. Hmm. Right, well, for the moment we'll stick it on the winch and then I'll secure it forward. Yes, further back. Right, so we're going to need to extend that. Not ideal. Not ideal at all, really. very much the bottom. <clears throat> so now it's slightly forward of the pad. Just slightly. And then this one. Yeah, just slightly forward of the pad as well. I think that's probably okay. Right. <clears throat> well, now seems as good a time as any to see what my depth, uh, my sounder says relative to that thing on the wall. Thing on the walls accurate. Zero point four. Okay, so we we draw one point five. 
So if there's a 0.4 under the keel, that should make it 1.9. <laughs> and the board is saying 2.8. So maybe it's got 0.8 added onto it. Or maybe that's built in to give a bit of clearance. I guess particularly if you've got four people on board, it's going to sink the boat a couple of inches, but yeah, who knows. I could adjust it, but I quite like that safety margin. Then again, would it be nicer to know that it's bang on accurate? Probably. Uh, we'll see. Right, anyway, let's get the dinghy blown up. I'm going to quickly double check these lines are good as well. Very key. Might take up some of the slack in this. There's a bit too much stretch in this line. I'm not overly happy with it, so I'm gonna switch it out for a Dyneema line. Or I should set these lines up properly. Oh, shit balls. Gaff, gaff, gaff. Side. Sound is saying 0.1. A set of about half a meter clearance by the look of it. It's gonna maybe come a touch tighter. Well, it's all in the hands of the guards now. How far have we got? About half a meter or so to go, 0.8 of a meter. All set up. Legs are a touch kicked forward. Um, I'll put some photos up, you'll see why I do that. I still feel they need lengthening, but it, it's almost like the Akum doesn't have like a completely flat bottom on the keel. It, it kind of rocks the boat forward, which makes the whole thing fairly terrifying. Hi. Right. A few moments later. Okay, so the boat's dried out and has it fallen over? Let's find out. This is pretty much how to wreck your car in one easy way. It's slightly disconcerting when you can see the, the water is almost completely level with this drying pad.
still upright. 